John D. Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I want to just give a shout out to all of my producers. Hey, everybody. Um, Great to have you all here. We're getting ready to kind of close this month out and just kick it forward. And I would be remiss if I didn't just take a moment in in prayer and acknowledgement acknowledgement for the people of Ukraine. And I just, uh, you know, it's heavy on my heart being a an uh, activist that goes back a few decades and how much myself, my mom, my family has done uh, to really be in the world of, how should I say it? To be in the world of peace. Let's keep peace. Uh, And I think for this show, what we're- they want outside. Okay, I think that's Olivia. So Jacob, (laughs) you're gonna have to mute Olivia Uh, because- Yeah, I sent a message to Olivia too. Okay, that's that's (laughs) Olivia. Because I'm telling you, I want her outside too. I'm all about that. Um, but today's show is uh, is related to this in a big way because I I really thought about this in my own healing journey and you know thinking about uh, what Jerry is bringing to the table. Jerry Jerry Sargent joining us here today, healing with light frequencies, the transformative power of star magic. And I thought, what have I learned since I started this 20 years ago and since we started the network? Uh, really working on the network in 08 and 09 launching it what have we learned what are, what has happened in our own knowledge base and what we've decided to show up in the world as and i will tell you if 20 years ago you'd have said to me hello we think we can help your body heal with high vibrational consciousness codes and light frequencies i wouldn't have turned the other way and walked away You'd have had my interest, but I wouldn't be all in like I am today because I had in my healing journey right here doing this show, I could not do anything but keep buying airtime, keep doing this. And I love doing it. Launch a network, grow the network, invite people to come. And the people just like Jerry have opened up a pathway to help me learn the true nature of healing. That's why it's so great to have him joining me here today. There is a true nature. It's not something that your mama may tell you, depends on who your mama is. But when you start to look at who Jerry is, the facilitator, the founder of Star Magic Healing, I I love that, Star Magic Healing. He's a powerful healer, motivational speaker, best-selling author, This fabulous book we're talking about here today, it is like the whole 360 degree of what you can do. But what I love about being able to talk to him, he and I have a lot in common. I don't know what it is about some of us, but we've been given the path of drug addiction, alcoholism, you name it. For whatever reason, that's been part of the deal. And because of that and where we are today, We have perhaps, I should say, just an interesting and acute understanding of what hitting bottom means. Today, get ready, fasten your seatbelt. We are going to take the journey with Jerry, Star Magic Healing. We're going to take the journey because once you learn this, once you experience this, once you learn how to activate, you're going to hear it in a minute, 
you will understand that you can change yourself around on a nanosecond. Jerry, it's so glad to have you. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Pat. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you, sister. Listen, I got to I got to start out with the question I ask everybody because your body of work that you've said yes to is by far, you know, one of the hardest things for me to wrap my mind around when my body was dying on me. Um, and one of the most profound, profound concepts for a lot of people, there's still concepts, concepts and healing that I've ever encountered, but you're taking this to a whole new level. I know, here's this, what I know. Anybody that comes on the show, they've got something that got them there. I'd love to know, Jerry, from you, what the challenges, what the obstacles, what, are, what were they that you had to overcome to bring you right here to this very moment? Well, where do I start? So I'll, give, <laughs> I'll give you the machine gun version, okay, as fast as I can. Um, I mean, like as a kid, like I was uh, put up for adoption, I ended up being fostered and then then got adopted. Um, I was raped by my first foster parents. Um, my, my adoptive mother, she used to beat me. Uh, I would turn to drink and drugs as a kid, um, all that sort of stuff, like lots of children, you know, lots of kids get into all this sort of stuff. And I was just a real angry child. You know, I just thought the world was against me. I wanted to fight everybody. I was just, you know, uh, as a teenager, I'm um, getting into drink and drugs. I lived in the UK, in England, and the rave scene was really rife. So I was at parties every weekend, dropping ecstasy tablets, acid and blowing whistles and I was having the time of my life. And uh, a couple of my mates died <clears throat> when I was like um, 16 years old, one in a car crash on the way back from a party and one from a heroin overdose. And like at that time, I thought, you know, this isn't cool, man. Like, you know, I, I got to kind of like maybe this could happen to me. I need to try and try and do something to change. So I ended up getting a job at a local ice cream factory. And my, my plan was, right, I'm going to work for a year. I'm going to save up loads of money. I'm going to buy an old camper van and just go in and travel with my girlfriend. So we ended up um, working, buying the camper van. We're all set to go the next, uh, the next day. The night before we went, right, we're in the pub with some friends and uh, we're drinking. And this man walks into the pub and we'd never met him before. We'd never even seen him before, but he just walked up to us and gave us this little yellow piece of paper. And on it, it said, Chris. And there was a mobile telephone number, a Spanish mobile telephone number. I didn't know it was a Spanish mobile until he said, I want you to take this number. I know you're going traveling. He said, don't do it. Go to Tenerife in the Canary Islands, phone this man, and you'll get free accommodation and then you'll earn at least 300 pounds a week. You know, we were 16, 300 pounds was a lot of money. And we looked up, we thought, where's Tenerife? Oh, it's sunny most of the year round. Let's do it. So we sold the camper van, bought one way tickets to Tenerife phoned the guy went and met him and we ended up getting involved in this like um pretty high profile criminal organization that was selling timeshare and then that took me into like drug smuggling and, and guns and different things and my whole life just kind of changed and again i was young and i was earning loads of money i had all of this freedom i didn't care i was like this is just the best life ever i can buy watches and suits and all of these kind of like things that you know you think that you're you know you, you want to feed your ego with um, and then I met my, my ex-wife now, but my, my wife to be at the time, she got pregnant pretty quickly. Um, our daughter, Alea was born. My ex-wife was from Romania. She didn't have a passport when she left the country. So I couldn't actually marry her and I couldn't get them back into England because Alea couldn't, my, our daughter couldn't get a passport either. So I had to smuggle those two back into England, managed to get them back into England. Then we got married. And then once we got married, I had to get them proper documentation. So it was easy to get the layer our daughters, but I needed to get Laura's too. So we ended up going back to Romania, got stuck there for a little while, paperwork and all this sort of stuff. Then when we were leaving, um, we were on the way back to, to Bucharest Airport and I was asleep in the passenger seat of a taxi. And Laura and the kids are in the back. And then I hear this loud crash wake up there's you know the cars like this swaying from side to side oh, it's glass and wind everywhere and i think to myself man we're in a bad accident 
You know, we're either going to hit the oncoming traffic or the car's going to roll over. And then suddenly we came to a stop. And I looked at the taxi driver. He looked petrified. I looked in the back. Alea was underneath the driver's seat. There were no seat belts. Laura had Josh in her arms. Both their mouths were full of glass. And I looked in front of me and there was a hole in the windscreen and there was blood dripping down my face. But I wasn't bleeding. So I thought, this is, this is really weird. And it was just getting daylight. So I got out the taxi, looked back up the road, and there were two ladies uh, lying on the side of the road. One had her ankles, both of them clean off, and the other one was kind of physically okay. I looked about another 100, 150 meters up the road, and there was what looked like a dead body. And what happened is these three ladies were crossing the road in the morning. The first one came through the windscreen, smacked me in the face whilst I was asleep, got flipped over the car and died. Second one had her ankles cut off, and the third one was physically okay. So I'm walking, well, I checked on the kids and stuff. And then I walked up past the two ladies because there was a man that had come out from a nearby factory. <clears throat> he was on the phone. I thought he's called the emergency services. What can I do? Like, I mean, she's just in a terrible state. I can't actually do anything. And I was fixated on this, what looked like a dead body. I walked towards it. I got closer and closer. And I got with about 10 meters and I see the lady's soul like this energy just hovering above the body and I'm shaking my head like come on get out of my head I can't really be seeing this and and it just it was just there and I got closer and closer and this this energy just kind of fizzled off into the ether and by that time I'm looking down at the lady her legs are wrapped up over her head she's completely smashed and it was like someone had taken an, an old car to the scrap heap like whatever was inside of the body it had no use for this, mm. this physical vessel anymore. Boom, it had just gone. There was no love lost. And I was shown this kind of connection and disconnection and what happens after death and what really is control in the body and all of this sort of stuff at the same time. And I remember looking up to the heavens and thinking, well, I said, thank you. And I, and I thought to myself, I want a whiskey and a cigarette. But I don't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> I don't drink whiskey. But it just felt like a time to celebrate. It was, it was strange. I didn't feel sad or upset or anything. I was really grateful to have had this experience. And it was like the universe was smacking me around the head and saying, come on, Jerry, wake up, man. We're so much more than these physical bodies. We're atoms and molecules in continuous movement and space. So this happened around the same sort of time. Uh, We'd lost a property business and friends and I set one up when I moved back from from Tenerife and we made millions like really quickly. And then it all went. We lost it all. The property market turned in 2004. Yeah. We lost everything. Yeah. And what happened is we got kicked out uh, onto the streets. Uh, and, and by that time, Josh, our, our son was born. So we had no money. I had this kind of experience. Um, we moved into some rented accommodation. And when we're in the rented accommodation, <clears throat> we had this really kind of crazy experience. Well, my wife did anyway, ex-wife. I'm watching TV one night and she comes downstairs and she says, Jerry, every time I close my eyes, I see all these dark images and hear all these dark voices. And it's like someone's trying to take me away. And I looked at her and thought, that sounds nuts, <laughs> you know. But like, you know, I said, what do you want to do about it? She said, I need to call my friend. So she called her friend that was a priest. So this priest comes around the house. She's putting crosses up and she's dousing the house. And I was sat there thinking, this is like something out of the portal, guys, man. This is weird. But anyway, so she, she does all this stuff and she calms Laura down. She goes to bed. And the next day I went to see my friend and I said, listen, man, what do you reckon? What do you make of this, 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 this thing that happened last night? He said, you've got to speak to this lady. And I said, I said, OK. So he gave me the name and telephone number of a lady and I phoned her up. She didn't answer. She phoned me back not long after. And she said, what's happened? I said, well, you know, this ha thing happened last night. She said, where do you live? And I said, 316 Richmond Road. That's the only part of the address I gave her. She said, hold on a minute. The phone went quiet and I'm listening and waiting. And then she said, have you been knocking some walls down? I said, well, we, we, we rent the property, but the previous owners clearly built an extension. She said, yeah, you've got an angry old man in your house. I'm like, what? An angry old man? <laughs> I've not seen him, you know? And, uh, you know, she's, I, I said, okay, well, let's say there is an angry old man. What are we going to do about it? She said, oh, I'll get rid of him for you. I said, brilliant. When can I book you in? When can you come down? She said, oh, I don't need to do that. I can do it from here. So I'm thinking this is just getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> so anyway, like we finished the conversation. I go home and I say to Laura, listen, I know I didn't tell you I was going to speak to this lady, but I've done that. And and, and I told her about what happened last night and she reckons there's an angry old man in the house. So she turned around to me and said, yeah, I know I've seen him, Jerry. So I'm like, what? So you've seen him. 
she's seen him. You, you've got no common friends. You could never possibly have spoken. There must be some element of truth. So like, I'm like a, a dog with a bone. Once I know something, like I've got something to latch onto, I just want to find out everything. So I phoned the lady back up and I said, I don't know what you do, but I've got to come and see you. So I phoned her up. I went to see her and she did past life regression. And it turned out that she worked for Scotland Yard in the psychic division solving crimes. And when I went to Tenerife and got involved in all this criminal stuff, if I hadn't have done all that, I wouldn't have met the guy that introduced me to her. So I had to go through all of that stuff. And oh. there's many other reasons why I went through it, but I had to meet him to introduce me to her later on in my path. So I met this lady. She became my first spiritual teacher. She taught me how to remote view, how to bring my light out of my body and travel, lots of different cool things. Around this sort of time as well, my friends and I were like really curious about all this stuff. And uh, we were researching the end of the Mayan calendar in 2012. So my mate phones me up and he says, Jerry, you know, um, there's this talk going on in Basingstoke, like about 30 minutes outside of London. So we booked it. We went down there and it was just a little talk in someone's house. Wow. We went in. This guy is giving like a talk. And uh, I ask him like a contradictory question and he looks at me. And his face disappears and there's a green lizard. And I'm like, what? You know, like on the outside, I'm trying to like look cool as a cucumber. But on the inside, I'm thinking, what the heck is going on, man? I'm seeing this green lizard. And he held my stare for like seven or eight seconds. And it seemed like forever. And I'm sweating and all this little stuff. And so this happened and his face kind of came back again. So that happened about six months after the car crash in Romania. My ex-wife had a headache. And I thought to myself, I can take this out of your head. I don't know why I thought it, but I did. I've gone over to her, saw the headache and it was green and I've grabbed it and pulled it out. Wow. It's a little bit weird, you know, but it kind of happened. And I just carried on doing what I was doing at the same sort of time. Um, I was stealing a lot of money from banks through like the, the work that we were doing. And um, I started giving this money to charity. Uh, through some friends and they were giving it to, to like um, charity or charitable organizations in Africa and they were building water pipelines wow. and building schools and all this sort of stuff. So the letters were coming back with the work that was happening. So what was happening to me internally is I started to give, and this is a really important part of my life because I started to feel what it's like to help other people. And up until that point in my life, I'd never done that. I was just me, 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 me. I just need this and this and this. I don't care about anybody yeah. else. You know, so that started happening. Then we moved to New Zealand and a friend of mine had a car accident and she was in hospital. The doctor said, you're never going to walk again. You're probably going to be, you know, um, in here for at least a year. And her partner phoned up and asked if I could help. She knew I've been on this spiritual journey and was learning lots of things. And I said, you know, how am I going to help now? Like, she's in England. I'm in New Zealand. What can I do? But my intuition was like, get some crystals and lie on the bed. So I got these crystals, put them on my energy centers, laid on the bed. And all of a sudden I'm inside a hospital room and all this light started pouring out of my hands. And I started putting her body back together. And I did this every day for a couple of weeks. And she walked out of hospital in 12 weeks and the doctors were flabbergasted. And I was thinking to myself, did I do something? Didn't I? Is this just my crazy imagination? But like when she came out of hospital, she phoned me up and she said, Jerry, I woke up one night, looked at the side of my bed and said, what are you doing here? She saw me in a hospital room. I was thinking, really? You saw me? I was in New Zealand. And, and she, she saw me exactly where I imagined myself. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm realizing this imagination stuff is so much more than what we were taught at school. Like it's actually happening in, in another quantum space somewhere. Around the same sort of time, I met this old fella called Michael. We became really good friends. He had a pyramid in his garden. I used to go around there every day and meditate. And he taught me how to meditate with my eyes open. I had so many experiences in there, but two that were really profound. The first one, I'm sat there and, and I'm meditating in this pyramid and my, my feet turn to flames and I'm looking down and there's balls of fire. And then Jesus appears in front of me and he says, you can walk wherever you want to go. Just don't be scared. And I'm thinking, OK, <laughs> that sounds cool. Like, and then he turns and he walks up these stairs that just appeared in the garden and through a door. So I followed him and we're in the Last Supper and he's talking to everybody and there's food on the table. And I looked out the window and there was this massive spacecraft. It was huge. And I'd never really had anything to do with like extraterrestrials or spacecrafts. So I'd never even thought about that stuff. So that happened. Then I came out of the guard, out of the room, back down the steps, back into my meditation. And then two weeks later, I'm meditating again. 
and a little space pod lands in the garden. Only way I can describe it. And there's a blue being inside of it. So I bring my light out of my body. I go and jump inside this, this, this craft and we fly through a tunnel for about four or five seconds, came out the other side and we're above a beach. There's water. And I knew that we were in Alpha Centauri. I don't know how I knew that. And I'd never even heard of it, but I just did. I started <laughs> downloading this information. So I've got out of the craft, walked up the beach, and there's 200 or so of these blue lyrans. These blue lyran beings are like six, six and a half foot tall. They had no clothes on. They, had, they were androgynous. And they hugged me. And when they hugged me, I just like melted. Like yeah. the love that I felt was just, I've never felt love like it, you know? Yeah. And uh it was like being home. Like I was like, you know, this is it. This is where, this is where I come from. Like, you know, and then, so I had this experience and they kind of moved out of the way. And one of them led me up the beach and through the, through this kind of jungle. And we went into this building that, which was made of light. And there's this really old blue being in there. And, uh, and it actually looked old. So it must've been really old to look old. And it was like meeting like um, a Native American chief, chief or something like an elder. And the being asked me to kneel down on the floor. All of this orange light started pouring into my crown. And it was full of this like spiral geometry that kept moving and ebbing and bending. It had no solid form. And this was downloading into my, into my consciousness. And I don't know how long it went on for, but then two of them just picked me up and like frog marched me back to the space pod. Like they wanted to get me out of there, like quick shut So I got put back in the spacecraft, went back through the tunnel, back into the garden, back into my meditation. And then nothing else happened for two years. And then I woke up one day and I said to, to Laura and the kids, we've got to go back to England. And they looked at me like I was a nutcase because we <laughs> just set up this gym. We were helping more people. It was going really well. I was on the TV doing like good morning TV, doing exercise <laughs> routines for people at home. And they were like, dad, you're nuts. Like we're not, we, we love school here. We're not coming home. So after me pestering them for a couple of weeks, they're like, we're like, okay, let's just go back. See what it's all about. So we put a manager in charge of the gym, jumped on the plane, went back home. And then things went into overdrive. Yeah. yeah I was out running one morning. I saw some fairies around a tree yeah. and I stop and I'm looking at the fairies. Then an angel comes down and says, my name's Archangel Gabriel. You need to write a book. So I said, well, what, what's it about? He said, it's called Into the Light. It's about your, your life. I said, okay. So I ran home, wrote the book, wrote it in like four weeks, published yeah. it. <clears throat> and it just sort of came out of me. And then once I published it, I started seeing this geometry in the empty space. And it was the same stuff that I was seeing that, that got downloaded in the orange light. Oh. And I was saying to my guides, like, what am I supposed to do with it? They said, you've got to meditate more, man. You're not meditating enough, Jerry. So I started getting up at five o'clock every morning with Josh, my son, before school. And we were going into these mystery schools in our meditations underneath the pyramids. And they were showing us these scrolls. They were getting these scrolls out. And on the scrolls were codes. And it was the same codes I was seeing in the space and the same codes I got in the orange download. We went every day for two hours for about nine months. And then people started coming into my life that needed healing. And I was like, let me just see if this stuff works. And I was trying it and it was working and I kept trying it and it kept working. So I thought maybe I can turn this into a business and charge people for this stuff. And then my wife comes home one day and she gives me a book and it's called, it was called Joe the Diviner. And it was about this Irish healer. I read it in a day. And I was like, and it was about this guy that was healing from his like um, garage at the end of his garden. I thought <laughs> this guy can do it. I can definitely do it. Yeah. So <laughs> I, um, I made up some little flyers. I went to this like mind, body, spirit festival. I told everybody that I was going to give away three free healings. If they put their name down, I draw the name out at the end of the hat, at the end of the weekend. And like about 70 or 80 people put their name down. And I phoned every single one of them and said that they'd won just so I could practice. So I had like 70 or 80 people to practice on. I worked on all of them and things were going well. I got some testimonials and thought, you know what? I'm going to set up a website. And that's when Star Magic <laughs> Healing was born. And then as soon as we set the website up, the blue beings come to see me again. I'm meditating, looking out over, uh, over the town where I live. And the whole town disappeared. And this being that was next to me, you know, he showed me the Christ consciousness grid. And there were all these lights around it. I said, what are those? He said, the healing centers, you've got to build them. I said, okay, well, if I build them, who's going to run them? He said, you've got to train people. So I said, okay. So I went home. I designed this training po program, put it up online. And then the next February, which was like 2017, we did our first training and people turned up from all over the world. And I was like, what are you doing here? Like, why have you come to see me? This is crazy, you know? 
So at the same time, they told me to write a book. I wrote the book, Healing with Light Frequencies, which you were talking about. Yep. And um, since then, we've like trained thousands of people in, in over 40 countries. And we're in the process of building our first healing center at the moment. We've also bought land for the second too. Like this stuff's just happening. And yeah. I'm not really doing anything apart from doing what these blue beings have told me to do, these lyrics. And now I'm talking to you and just, you know, sharing yeah. the knowledge and, and just helping people. Yeah, well, I love it. Thank you for sharing that because we're going to take a short break. But when we come back, I want to talk to you about the magic ingredients. There's a lot I could talk to you about in the book. But what I'm discovering is I love your story because I get asked this all the time. Gail, Gail Tor knows me very well. I get asked the question, where the heck did all of this come from for you? This positive talk and then a positive talk network and how did you come up with the idea to design this? And you know, once upon a time, I was afraid to tell people, right? And I know you must have went through some of that. Hundred right? yeah. percent. And I love your wife or your ex-wife. Yeah, like Jerry. Yeah, there's like a man in the house. But see, this time now and what you bringing forward on healing. If I looked at those five ingredients like we're going to look at when we come back, I would almost guarantee you that there's one of them that people are really struggling with now, if not more than one. But when you put them all together, and by the way, I looked at the cover of this book, it is like crazy. It's, a, it's just, I was so fixated on it. I was going to say, Jerry, do you have like a large poster of this? Um, <laughs> When we come back, we're going to talk about that. Before we go to break, how do people get a copy of the book? Because I they can get the Kindle version as well. And then also, it's really important that they know how to find you because you will train people, you have classes, you have so many things you're helping people with and we need it. How do they do that, Jerry? Starmagichealing.com. Yeah, through starmagichealing.com, you can get access to all of our, you know, all of, all of, all of our training programs. We've got meditations i mean there's there's so many tools there's loads of free stuff there's some paid stuff you can get access to all of our social media channels so just come and say hi <laughs> come and say hi and, and and drop by you know it'd be great to connect yeah and by the way we're talking about this one book but i know jerry not from just this one book but i know jerry from the other books that he's written and other things that he's written and so and if you're thinking me and you're thinking where I came from and what I was born and then the reason I asked you that question about the challenges Jerry because here's what I know that's what you and I have in common we've overcome something crazy that affected us in ways that are just on another planet when we come back what did I do in the spirit of Jerry, what did I do when Dr. Jean Houston said to me in a workshop, you have a quantum partner that's trying to help you. Why do you start resisting every time they're trying to help you? Now that was two decades ago. Let's take a short break, Benny. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning us in and turning us on. Uh, in case you're tuning in or just jumping in halfway, I want to do two things. One, if you have any questions, if you want to connect with Jerry during the show, just give us a call 1-800-930-2819. Say hi to Benny and Benny will get you put on here to chat with us. If you want to find out about what we're talking about and about what what star magic healing is about and there's so much more or if you're interested in becoming a world-class facilitator or if you're interested in some classes if you want to be part of star magic academy all of the above everything is right here on the site in addition you can also plug in become an infinity me uh, member so many things jerry's got so many ways to engage right now that this is really what it's about. Whether you're interested in healing, interested in, in facilitating, interested in some learning, interested in the foundation, the foundation is critical. Uh, please, please go to starmagichealing.com. 
Um, Jerry, thank you so much for today. Um, there are so many things I could talk with you about in the book. There really are. And, you know, I was reading through it uh, again. And one of the things I thought, you know, I really need Jerry to talk about these five ingredients. They're almost like they're in essentials. And everything else in the book, everything from talking about the cellular level or this or the body or visualizations for expansion and growth. I love that chapter. All of this, though, has to be sort of embraced in these five magical keys. Can you talk about those? Yeah, sure, Dr. Pat. Um, well, the first one is love, you know, and like love is the most powerful, <clears throat> measurable force that we have in the universe. I mean, lo love is like the, gl the glue of healing. OK, so if, if I'm going to go into a healing session and and connect with with another human being to do the work, the first thing I'm going to do is be here right in the center of my chest, in my heart. And I'm going to open my heart and I'm going to connect to whoever it is that I'm working on, uh, whether that's in, a, in, in the space physically or whether they're in a, a remote location, the other part of the world. So I'm going to entangle what we would call a hologram with the other human being and uh, i would open my heart and i would connect and, and and love is like the juice the energy the power you know as soon as you drop into here and you open your heart miracles take place just from that like you know just unbelievable and then light is the next ingredient and, and light is information and like if you look at a physical human being beyond that physical form it is mathematics. You know, we're just like a bundle of geometry, a bundle of Merkabas, a bundle of Cathara grids, a bundle of, of different shapes and symbols, all just spinning and swirling together. We're just pure light with vibration, with sound. And there's so many ways you can use light. I mean, there's different light frequencies that you can tap into to bring into the human being you're working on that will create the healing. And, and with practice, you start to, to kind of understand what they are. And that's what we teach through star magic. Um, and not really teach, but help you remember, because all of this knowledge is really locked up inside of you. I've got nothing really to share with you that's new. It's just an ancient wisdom that we're just helping you tap into. So light is very important. Then you've got imagination. You know, inside your mind, you see things and you play around with things and you create things. And actually, you never really create anything. All you do is you tap into information streams that have always been there because every single potential lies within the quantum field. So, you know, I could walk out of my house and turn left. I could turn right. I could go straight. I could go up. All Whatever direction I take, it's just going to keep unfolding. And it's the same throughout the entire universe. You know, so what we, we do and we create and we play with inside of our mind is actually real. So you can actually create new realities with your imagination. And whenever we go into a healing session, we always ask one real important question. And that is, please show me something I don't know. When you ask to be shown something you don't know, it opens you up to an infinite field of possibility. A lot of healing systems are systems. Ours isn't. Ours is like playing a game. So when you, when you use a system, you take a systematic approach, but you're confined to the boundaries of that system. OK, like someone who knows everything knows less than someone who knows nothing. Right. Because if you think, you know, everything you, you you're, you're confined to what you think everything is. But if you can accept, you know, nothing, then you break down those boundaries and barriers and you just you flow into this sea of possibility. That's where the magic is. It's a little bit like a bumblebee. Right. A bumblebee doesn't know they can't fly. According to the law of aerodynamics, they've got these these big fat bodies and these tiny little wings, but they, they don't know that. OK, so they wake up every morning bzzz, and they kind of levitate and they just fly. You know, they haven't got a thought process like ours. Like I've got this kind of like um, this vision of bumblebees, right? If they had an ego and thoughts like us, they'd wake up every morning, look in the mirror and think, oh, sugar. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They, and, and they, they'd be queuing up at the doctors trying to get Prozac yeah. because they're all depressed. Well, but they don't you know, know that. And, you know, I have to tell you, we have some of the best listeners on the planet. This is a 20 year audience and they're amazing. So much so. I just got a message from Benny. We happen to have one of our callers right now wanting to chat with you. Benny, go let's it. go to the phone. Let's bring Anna on. 
Hi, Anna. Just give it Anna, just waiting for Anna. While we wait for Anna, we'll just keep going here. I'm not sure what happened to Anna, but- uh, That's okay. Uh, one of the things that is so important about sharing this is, and sharing the five elements that I'm curious about what happens, and this has been my personal observation. You know, I could have four of the five going on and seem like I am moving forward. But the magic is when we put the energy of it all together, isn't it? Absolutely. Like the, the, the fourth and fifth and knowing and imagination. And, and, and the fourth one knowing is you've just got to know that what you're doing is working. There can't be any doubt. There can't be any second guessing. You've just got to realize that what you're doing is setting up an environment so the other human being can self-heal. You chuck the ingredients together and they work. And, and the, the last ingredient is intention. You know, you, you have to decide that you're going to do this like you can't put one foot in front of the other without an intention i can't come and give you a hug and say hey pat how are you doing without me intending to do that yeah. so there has to be an intention behind it but we always live leave like an open-ended intention if someone comes and says oh well i've got diverticulitis we're not going into that healing session to to facilitate the healing of their diverticulitis because it's too limited we're going in there for whatever is that human being's greatest growth in the moment and then within that framework the, the diverticulitis will clear up. Mm -hmm. So we get these five ingredients and it's like a baker baking a cake, right? The baker bakes, gets all of the ingredients, the fruit and the milk and the butter and whatever they get, the sugar, they dump it into a pot, they stir it around, they get the pot, they stick it in the oven, they put it onto 140 degrees, 35 minutes, whatever it is, and then they go and have a cup of tea. They don't sit there looking into the oven thinking, oh, my gosh, I hope it rises. Oh, my gosh, I hope it tastes nice. And then it's, all of the mixture is evenly spread. They just trust. They just know that it's going to turn out perfectly. So what we do with healing is we get these ingredients. We, we bring them into the into the cauldron. You know, we stir them all up and then we let go. Hmm. And then we allow the ingredients to, to, to work their own magic yeah. and, and, and like what we always say to people is we don't actually heal anybody you know, i'm not a healer all i do is facilitate the process and create the environment so the other human being can heal yeah, yeah they you actually know, heal themselves uh what i love is one of these that you created was inspirational to me when i had my episode as a matter of fact it became so foundational that everything that I was supposed to have done with my life, I didn't do. And I followed this. And we're going to talk about that more. That's imagination. But we're going to hop over to Anna, if we could grab Anna, Benny. Anna, are you there? I am. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, got you, Anna. How can we help Great. you today? I want you to meet my friend, Jerry. Hi, Anna. Hi, Jerry. It's nice to speak with you. You too, sister. How can we help you? So I am trying to work into also wanting, I want very badly to facilitate healing in, um, in others and work toward that as a career. And I'm going to be phasing out of my current career in just over a year. So I'm kind of um, grasping at straws on where to start and what to do. Well, I mean, I, I'm kind of a little bit biased because obviously, you know, it's yeah. star magic, but like we have a, a, a complete protocol, like, you know, so we have an academy. So if you did yeah. want to, 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 to get to grips with a healing modality and, and build a business out of it, then we, we've got the whole setup. Like we will train you. We take you through the academy. Um, you can then go off and, and start your own business or you could work with us traveling around, helping us with trainings and, and come and work yeah. in our healing centers. The first one's going to be ready the end of next year in Transylvania and Romania. So you can come and do some work there. But the way that we structure our, our kind of like facilitators is to get them working remotely from home. So you could actually work from the comfort of your own home, have all of your clients all over the world. You've got an international marketplace. And uh, that's the that's the beauty about distance yeah. healing. You're not limited to like your yeah. town, or your city. So, I mean, we, we have everything in place that, that could help you get set up. Well, and I'm, I'm less biased than that. I am a believer that there are no coincidences. 
that for some reason, today is the show you're listening to. In the middle of this interview, when we're talking with somebody that's created that at a time in your life when you're searching for answers. So I, I love the way the laws of the universe just line everything up to give you the perfect choice. Yes, I totally agree. And I turned it on right when he started talking about his background in star magic. And I looked up his um, your website, Jerry, and I was just like, this is what I, I need structure in my life. Yeah. So I need to know what things to follow. People have said, just go out and do it. And I just can't do it, but I don't feel right. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you're going to find that there is a teaching here. We were right on, in the middle of talking about these five ingredients, which are actually cornerstone. Yeah. But when you work with Jerry in this way, you're going to learn so much more. And again, Jerry, I love that what you're doing is it's not just about reading. It's about taking people through a way for them to actually practice, to prepare. So Anna, we'll make sure, Jerry, give, give Anna your website again, would you? Yeah, Anna, it's, uh, it's starmagichealing.com. Yeah, yeah. And if you've got any, if you go to the website and go to the training pages, you can download a prospectus and it will tell you all about the level one training. Mm -hmm. So you can read that and then you can book a free call with one of our team. They, yeah. they, they can answer all your questions. You can mm -hmm. speak to a trained facilitator that's been on level one, level two, level three. And they'll just they'll answer all your questions and and talk you through, you know, the kind of in, in, ins and outs of how it all works. Yeah. OK, Anna, you good to go Great. with that? Really check it out, right? I totally will. I've already opened the website. I love it. It's yes, I will follow it. Thank you. I love it. Thank you, Anna. Thank you Thanks, so much. Thanks, Anna. Um, wow. I, I mean, this is why I love doing this. But you know, look, one of the things that I've looked at, and the book, of course, shows this: love, intention, imagination, knowing, and light. And I want to just go in the time we have left. I want to go through them. But there's one in particular that I've not only found within myself, Jerry, but in other people. It's the one, it's like the Achilles heel for some people. They get four out of them, right? And they get to number four knowing. And there's that one slither of doubt. I would love for you to talk about all five, but give us your version of what knowing means. Well, for me, it's about knowing that it's just happening. Like there can't be like this, there can't be even 0.01% of that. You've just got to open your heart and just hand it over. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen so, I mean, even in my own personal life, you know, I mean, I, I was, I, I've been in quite a few car crashes in my life. Right. But the, the, I'll just to quickly go through another one. I was, I was uh, on my way back from seeing my nan. She, she, she's passed back to spirit now, but she was 96 and she was in a nursing home uh, with dementia going back, you know, right at the start when star magic was starting and um, I'm driving home. It's like, boxing day and a taxi comes across the crossroads and hits the side of my car my car goes into a lamppost my head goes through the windscreen the car like spins up the road I got knocked out but then woke up as it's spinning and everything's in slow motion it's cut a long story short I ended up jumping out of the car before it kind of smashed into the wall and um my eye it felt like someone was stamping on my eyeball I went to the doctor the next day. My missus and kids are like, you know, you got to go and see the doctor. I hadn't been registered at the doctor for so long, but I, I booked in, went to see them. And I explained the story and the doctor said, you need to toughen up, Mr. Sergeant. And I'm like, OK. So I went down to like uh, the hospital to accident and emergency. They did an X-ray and it turned out that my um, eye socket was cracked. It was pinching a the nerve. There was bleeding on my brain and um, it, it was dripping down. The blood was dripping down into my eyeball. And the doctor said, there's nothing we can do uh until the swelling goes down so i thought okay i went home i thought i'll just try and sort it out myself so i went into this meditative state and i said please show me something i don't know to help me facilitate the healing of this incredible human being but this time the human being was me i brought up my own hologram and i was shown a bucket so what i did is i got like a tube okay i stuck one tube into the in behind my eye and I sucked on the other end and started siphoning the blood into the bucket. I then got my skull and I corrected it, went to sleep, woke up, it was all better. 
wow. you know I'd, I'd fixed the crack in my eye socket the blood had gone the 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 bit in my brain where it was bleeding or better you know it all just happened straight away you know and i've seen and and, and that that's just by playing around with, with with your imagination and just knowing that it's happening there was no doubt in my mind that this wasn't gonna gonna not heal you know and i've seen this with with, with hundreds thousands of people you know just playing around and just going into that space and just trusting and and it just works out you know, I mean, people, when, when you communicate positively with your own body, you're communicating with your cells. You know, the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not real. So whatever you're talking, however you're communicating with your body, whatever you're visualizing, there's a part of you that thinks this is actually happening right now. So your cells respond to what you're thinking and what you're feeling. So whether you're thinking and feeling positive or negative things, your body's going to recreate that. So you're better off just putting yourself into a space where everything's positive everything's magical it's it's like athletes you know an athlete who plays basketball for example or a, a weightlifter you know they can imagine training in their minds and still get something like 30 to 40 percent gains you know and, and 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 someone that goes and actually really practices obviously gets much more but you can still get the gains and and, and the muscles respond and, and, and the neurons fire and everything fires and yeah. and works in exactly the same way oh. by just imagining running or jumping or whatever it is oh my god i just had this experience over the weekend um i play a sport and it has been what two years since we haven't been able to do anything indoors really and even now I'm playing with the mask, but all of my, uh, all of the people, just all of them are walk up and up to me and saying, what happened to you? You're playing so well, you must've been. And I thought about this and the difference is exactly what you just said. It's what you just said. It is coming back to something I love and knowing how well I can play not thinking about it you know that time break helped me remember the heart of it and when i step out there to play i don't ask myself anymore do i think i can make that shot and i had those moments this week and it's so funny we're talking about that because i never thought about can i really hit a ball 60 miles an hour 10 feet away from the table. I didn't think about it. And what you're talking about is pivotal for us because I don't think my body would have healed either if I would have had that moment of doubt about what you're talking about, about learning new things, about discovering it. And boy, I wish I could have it just have a magic wand and just infuse people with just this level of knowing, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and, and a lot of people talk about believing, but for, for, for us, we try and encourage people not to believe because when you believe, if you believe in something, you're like, I believe that I can do this. Okay. And that's based on some kind of thought construct. It's based on some kind of idea, ideology. Oh yeah, I can do this. You know, I'm great at this and blah, blah, blah. But if you look at a belief, if you look at a belief system, okay, it, it, it triggers and stems from thoughts. And if you look at thoughts and you trace thoughts back to where they come from, they come from more thoughts. And those thoughts come from more thoughts. And if you trace them back to their origin, they come from one of three things, time, distance, or measurement. And in the quantum field, time, distance, and measurement don't exist. Therefore, all belief systems are based on something false and something illusory. But when you go into that space of knowing, you transcend all of that. Because when you know, you know. Like, you know, you can't beat knowing, you can't trump knowing. It's, it's something that's internal. Yeah. It's out of the mind and it's in the body and it's intrinsic and it's, it's, it's just truth. Yeah. And then when it's that intrinsic truth, that's when you've got it. You know, you just, it, it's what it is and it's happening. And that's it. You know, when you believe and, you know, yeah. you, there, there's doubts within belief systems. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I loved hearing this from you. This hour goes so quickly. There's so much more to the book uh, that we could talk about, but there's so much more to your work. And, you know, I don't want people to go through the eight year healing journey I went through because I struggled with knowing, struggled with imagining wellness, right? 
you know, I, this is what gets me up every day is to share what you're doing, Jerry, so that people like Anna can plug in. Can you imagine the lives that will change? I want to ask you this last question. I'd love to know. I know you're laughing, right? I imagine it every day. Um, I'd love to know what your personal message is, Jerry. Thank you so much for all you're doing. I'd also love to know what you'd like to leave us with today and give out the website again, please. Yeah, I mean, you know, first up, thanks for having me. It was a beautiful, beautiful experience just to be in this space with you. And for everyone listening, I suppose my message is really, uh, it's about stepping into your power through love. Like, first of all, love yourself, love who you are and what you are, and put yourself first before everyone. Know that you're the most you know, important human being on planet Earth. You're the most important soul in the universe. And it's not being selfish. It's called self-love, putting yourself before everybody and realizing that you're sovereign and that you're free. And, you know, you can go out into this world and make up the rules of this game of life. You know, you don't have to play by the rules that have been laid down for you. Decide what makes you happy. Decide what fills your heart full of joy and bliss and go and do that and do it every day. <laughs> and don't sacrifice your values or anything for anyone. Just do what you love. Do what's in your heart and follow this thing because it's your life compass. It will lead you in the direction of your dreams. So just be loved, stand in your sovereignty, follow your heart and just go and be extraordinary <laughs> and express your divinity. I love it. I hope you'll come back. There's so much more to speak with you about. Uh, and I'm so thrilled that you open up your heart. You've opened up your world to people to learn. Jerry, thank you so much for all, all that you're doing. So appreciate you. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute honor and love you, sister. Thank you. Oh my God. I love it too. I wanted to say to everybody, you know, you heard a little story from Jerry, you heard a little bit from me, no matter what you're going through. I just want to say to all of you is that you, you can end it. You can end the struggle. You can end the sadness, the grief, the disappointment. You can end it. You know, you're talking to two people here that know what it's like to be at rock bottom and really wonder if there is enough, if there is an out. We know today, that's why we do these show. Please check out what Jerry's got to offer, what he's doing to help people all over the world and get involved, get engaged. And you can learn this if this is something you choose. But in the meantime, know that all of you out there, the best audience planet, Jerry, thank you so much for hanging with me. Thank, thank you, you. <laughs> Benny, Olivia, Jacob, Anna, thank you. And to all of you out there, the best audience on the planet, love you all. We'll see you next time.